candlesticks. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them who are evil and thou hast tried them who say they are apostles and are not and has found them liars and has borne and has patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted nevertheless i have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love remember therefore from where thou art falling and repent and do the first works or else i will come unto thee quickly and will remove the candlesticks out of his place except thou repent but this thou hast that thou hast hated the deeds of the nicolaitans which i also hate he that had an ear let him hear what the spirit said unto the churches to him that overcometh will i give to eat of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of god gracious god we thank you this morning coming back from the convention weary weak and tired in the flesh but our spirit is strong and again we have gathered lord in your presence that we may receive the blessings for today forgive us our trespasses lord the thoughts of our hearts and the words of our mouth may they be acceptable to you lord and we pray lord that you heal our sicknesses your children who are sick in the body soul or spirit here present or in the houses or in the hospital we commit each one into your hands lord even the little babies we commit them also into your holy hands the young ones and their teachers we commit them into your holy hands thank you lord for your children who have traveled back to their stations to their families to their churches and you granted each one journey mercies we also commit our dear brother samuel johnson into your hands who is still here with us lord and will be leaving us to return home next tomorrow tuesday we dedicate his journey back into your hands lord that you will bear him on eagle's wings and take him back home to meet his family and the congregation waiting for him safe and in peace and now father bless us this morning where we have left our first love may we go right back there and pick it up help us to overcome give us strength for the journey lord we take control over everything that's present in this place right now visible or invisible for your glory and your honor may they come to subjection to the power and authority of your name in the name of the lord jesus christ can we say amen? amen praise the name of the lord god bless you please be seated all right i want to ask that question again apart from our our brother who we identified to be here for the first time today i want to know if there's anybody here today that today is your first time to come to worship with us if there's anyone here today again can you stand up wherever you are we would like to recognize you and and welcome you so that after church we can see, sit with you for a minute anyone else that i have not noticed pardon me okay my daughter there 
God bless you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. God bless you, dear. Anybody else? Okay, dear brother. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Thank you, dear. Anybody else? All right, my daughter over there. Thank you for coming, dear. God bless you. Okay. God bless you. Thank you for coming. There's a brother there, too. God bless you, brother, for coming. We are glad to recognize you. Thank you for coming. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap off for everybody. The Lord is good. Hallelujah. Amen. While we wait for others to yet come, please be seated. It's your first time today. Don't let it be your last time. Amen. God will give you something to encourage you in this pilgrimage. Amen. Coming back from the camp meeting today, or yesterday, I feel very strongly led to share with you some very outstanding encouragement. This race is a race of life and death. In this race, there are two things that we, we must run into. And that is succeeding in pleasing God or in offending God. We will succeed in inheriting eternity in the kingdom of God or end up in hell because both of them are real. Having gone to the camp meeting and heard the word of God preached through different messengers, it's left for us to go home and put in practice what we have learned. We have not gone out on a tourist trip. We have gone to a camp meeting. We have not gone for sightseeing or some time of entertainment. We have gone for a time of renewal and revival. And let that revival fire continue to burn. Amen. Amen. Not minding how we feel weak in our flesh. Our spirit must be strong. Interpreters, can you please reduce your volume? Today I want to share with you what I have titled, Break the Circle. You know what a circle is? There was a time the church in the wilderness coming home from Egypt to the promised land got to a mountain and there they displayed unbelief. And God said to Moses in the morning, lead the people to start going around the mountain. And they keep going round and round and round. And they keep going around the mountain. To nowhere. Until God said, you have gone around this mountain enough. Amen? You have gone in circle and in circle and in circle enough. Please get me that chair. I'd like to sit down. And God says, it's time to break that circle. I think we too may not know that spiritually some people are just going around in circles. It's time to break the circle and start going straight. Know where you're coming from and where your destination is. I'd like for you to pay an undivided attention because I see a lot creeping in into this message and see a lot walking in circles and going to nowhere. We are not supposed to be going to nowhere. We are supposed to be going to somewhere. No matter the pressure, the church in the wilderness pressurized Aaron to introduce to them wrong doctrine and wrong worship and the calf was made for them to worship pressure pressure that Aaron cannot manage he succumbed to pressure and introduced idolatry into the camp and when God sent Moses down from the mount Moses was so angry so angry that he broke the Ten Commandments, written by the finger of God. 
Then he ground it to powder, put it in water, and gave to the people to drink. Thousands died because of that. Then he commanded others to draw their sword and kill their brothers. All that refused to repent and come to the side of God. Moses said, who is on the Lord's side? Let him come to me. We must know on whose side we are. As we move daily, spiritually speaking, to our own destination. Many who started the journey claiming to believe the prophet Moses did not get to the promised land because they really did not believe him. In this day, we also have a vindicated prophet through whom God has brought us his word. Many also who today are claiming to believe the word of God. Pressure, trials, temptations, and so forth will come upon us to prove whether we really have the revelation of what we have received. Many will go backwards. For the Bible says, Iniquity shall abound, and the love of many shall wax cold. Their love for God will wax cold. Their love for one another will wax cold. Their love for church will wax cold. Their love for the word of God will wax cold. Their love for faith in God will wax cold. But there are others who no matter the pressure, no matter the trial, no matter the temptation, instead of their faith waxing cold, it will become hot. Stronger and stronger. Because they do have a perfect understanding of who they are, where they're coming from, and where they're going. If you claim to be saved by the blood of the Lamb, what are you saved from? If you don't know what you are saved from, you will go right back like a dog to his vomit. We have come back from our camp meeting. A whole week in the presence of God. Feasting, both naturally and spiritually. Rejoicing, both naturally and spiritually. Now we have a taste of what the kingdom of God will look like. The joy of the Lord gave us strength. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Most of us slept on the bare floor. Most of us slept on benches. Because there is not enough accommodation for everybody. Some slept in the tabernacle. Some slept inside their car. Inside their buses. It was not convenient. It was not very interesting. But in the morning, we rise up with happiness. We come up rejoicing. Amen? The joy of the Lord made up for every inconvenience that we experienced. Shall we suffer all that in vain? No. Some of us eat very delicious food back home. But in the camp, we eat camp food. What is the difference? The difference is at home, you eat what you want. But at the camp, you eat what you see. You may not want it, you may not like it, but you eat it because you have to. And the love of God, the joy of the Lord, will make up for the inconveniences. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. See how happy you were in the camp. No worries. No house rent. No bill is due. No Nepal bill to pay. Nothing, nothing. Just wake up, worship God, eat. Go back, sleep, wake up, worship God, eat. The kingdom of God will be wonderful. Yeah. It will be wonderful. It will be wonderful. Amen. Then at the kitchen, we have our brothers and our sisters 
laboring for us. They run out to the market, they buy foodstuffs, they come and cook under that heavy flame of fire with joy. Some of them highly placed individuals, highly educated, highly placed business people, government people, medical people. But they were there cooking for us without salary, without payment. No grumbling, no complaining. What was giving them the strength to do such menial jobs for us? The joy of the Lord. Because they're doing it for God's sake. Amen. There's one man I used to know in Brother Samuel Johnson's camp meeting. The man is not a believer of the message. But every year that there is a camp meeting, he will come and cook in the kitchen. Cook for everybody. But he won't want to be baptized. Brother Johnson tried and tried to get him to believe and be baptized. He said, no, no, you can't baptize me. But every year, maybe for 20 years or so, he keeps coming. Every year, he'll come and cook and work hard for all the believers. And when we finish, he will go. Next year, he will come again. But he won't believe. He won't be baptized. But he loved the bride so much. He loved God. He loved the church. But he refused to be baptized. You ask me what is going to happen to him. God will decide that. Because the Bible says that the boy that is kind to the bride, that alone will put him in the kingdom too. Somebody will say, uh, when did we see you, Lord? When did we help you? When did we cook for you? When did we do this? And he will say, because you did it for my, for one little one of my children, you did that for me. So we also thankful to God for all of you who labored in the kitchen. Some of my children here donated cows for us to eat. I deliberately did not make announcements about donations. But let me tell you, God took record of every donation. Cows, goat, chicken, sheep, ram, rice, different things, money to support and sponsor the convention. Let's give the Lord a clap profit for everyone. Glory be to our God. I thank God also for our elders who labored to manage the little space that was available for everyone that came. We are trusting God to help us to build more hostels, to make it more convenient. Because the population this time was unexpected. And if the Lord tarries, next year will be even more than this. Thank God for our deacons, our ushers. Amen. Everybody was wonderful. Now, the question is this. At the end of all this, at the end of all this, or how will all this end? Are we going to continue like this to the end? Brother Johnson preached a message in the camp. He says we should hold what we have for how long? Until he comes. For the Bible says, He that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. To the end. To the end, brothers. To the end. If God has blessed you in the area of supporting his work, continue to the end. You who is anointed to pray, continue to the end. You who is anointed to evangelize, Continue to the end. You who is anointed to sing, to preach, to visit. Continue wherever you find yourself. Whenever or whatever God has called you to do in the body. Let the love of God, let the joy of the Lord continue to burn in you. Praise the name of the Lord. In the book of Ephesians that we just read. God said two things there. One is, I like 
something that you are doing that I like. That is, you hate the Nicolaitans, the deed of the Nicolaitans. That is worldliness in the church should not be allowed. Amen. Amen. Pride, superiority will not be allowed in the church of Jesus Christ. We are all one. Born of the same spirit. Saved by the same blood. Peter calls it common salvation. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Very good. Very good. Now, God also tells the Ephesian church, there is something about you that I don't like. You have forsaken your first love. The love that made you to begin to serve me, to run this race, the love that motivates you to make positive decisions concerning the things of God, the house of God, and the children of God. It says you have forsaken that. Why did they forsake it? I don't know. But I have always believed that it was pressure. When you make a decision to start living for God, it's a great decision. But that's just the beginning. For you to prove that you have taken that decision to live for God, you have to prove it when you pass through trials, through temptations, through disappointments, through tribulations, you stand your ground and refuse to be moved. Like the song we sing, Jesus is my Savior, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree, I am planted by the waters, I shall not be moved. You cannot claim that until you have passed through some trials, some mountains, some valleys. And then you can come out where the sun shines so bright and have a testimony that will encourage others. What is the meaning of Ephesus? It simply means to aim and relax. To aim. To decide to do something. And then abort the decision. To start to run a race. And then stop and go back. To begin to do a thing. And then stop doing that thing. To aim at achieving something. And then you abort the aim. Most of us have done that in the past. Deciding to stop certain things. Then we we'll go back to those things again. Deciding to start doing certain things. Then we we'll stop doing them halfway. Your second name is Ephesus. So, how many brother Ephesus do we have here? And sister Ephesus. We have just returned from a convention. Where we have made promises to God. Where we have made decisions before God. Where we have entered into covenants with God. Just yesterday. Just yesterday. Have you kept your promises? Have you kept your promises? Or have you already broken them? Or have you already made plans to break them? Or have you created rooms and opportunities to break them? Allowing the devil to create an avenue for you to break the promises you made to God. That would be terrible. That would be terrible. That you have just returned yesterday and maybe by today you have already forgotten the promises you made. Brother, stand still. Ephesus. Why would people make a promise to God and then break it? Make a covenant with God and break it. Start walking in righteousness and then stop. It's because they lost the love. The love that made them make the decision in the first place. God has called us into this evening light. 
it is a grand privilege. Not everybody in the world has the opportunity to recognize the voice of the seventh angel or the message of this hour. But it please God that you and I, being predestinated before the world began, with our names in God's book of life, ordained to be manifest on earth in this hour, to live for God and to be carriers of the light, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and to be salt of the earth at this time. Let us not disappoint God. Now, let me read something here in the book of John, chapter 3. John chapter 3. Alright. John chapter 3. I am reading verse 23. From verse 23. And John also was baptizing in Aeon near to Salim because there was much water there. And the same and they came and were baptized. For John was not yet cast into prison. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond the Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness behold the same baptized and all men come to him john answered and said a man can receive nothing except it be given him from above ye yourselves bear me witness that i said i am not the christ but that I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom who standeth and heareth him rejoiced greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy therefore is fulfilled. He must increase but I must decrease. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth. He, he that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he hath seen and heard that he testify it and no man received his testimony he that had received his testimony has set his seal to this that God is true for he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God for God giveth not the spirit by measure unto him. The Father loveth the Son and had given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son had everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abided on him. Can we say amen to that? Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. John the Baptist. Baptizing at Aeon because there's plenty of water there. Some people came to him to say, well, the one that was with you beyond Jordan, that was Jesus Christ. That he was baptizing on the other side and many people are going to him. Now see what John, a true messenger, had to say. John did not want to attract 
people to himself. He did not want to make disciples for himself. He did not want people to come worship him. Amen? He pointed them back to the one that is higher than him. Can we say amen to that? Amen. That's good. That's what a true messenger does. A true messenger always point away to Jesus Christ. And that's why Brother Brandon preached a message on look away to Jesus. Look away to Jesus. The author and finisher of our faith. John says, He that comes from above is above all. All. From Abraham to John the Baptist. He that comes from above is above all. He admitted the fact that Jesus was above him. And said, This is my joy as a friend of the bridegroom that I stand here and hear the voice of the bridegroom. He said, That is my joy. And then he says, He that has the bride, the same is the bridegroom. For everybody was going to Jesus. Thousands and thousands were following him. John was not jealous. He did not say, well, I came before him. I baptized him. People should follow me. That would make him a wrong messenger. But you see, he taught us. At the end of the scripture we just read, John said, he that believeth on the Son, that is the person that has life. Amen? Amen. Amen? He that believeth on the Son. Those that believe John, they follow Jesus. That is the one that has life. That's the one that has life. We believe the message of the hour. But the message of the hour brings us back to this Bible. It doesn't take us away from the Bible. It brings us back to this Bible. And this Bible is Jesus Christ. The Bible says in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh. And it dwelt among us. Today we have it in print. He that believeth on the Son has life. He that does not believe on the Son, it says the wrath of God is upon him. Praise the name of the Lord. There are many people today who claim to believe this message, but they don't believe Jesus. You know what is moving them? The st stimulation of revelation. Stimulation. Stimulation can come, but it can go also. You can get stimulated by revelation. You can believe this message because it is new. You can believe this message because it opens your eyes. But if you don't have change, change of spirit, change of heart, change of nature, which prepares you for the final body change, there's going to be a body change. Do you believe that? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. There's going to be a body change. See? You must be born again. Some people think just by accepting this message, they have, they have been born again. No. When you are born again, you will bring forth the fruit of the Spirit of God. That's what matters. Some people have so much revelation, so much knowledge, that they cannot win a soul. I have been to churches around this country, beyond this country. They, maybe they are about maybe 25 in a church and every year they are 25 and they are happy to be 25 every year the bible says they that turn men to righteousness they shall shine as the stars of the firmament praise the name of the lord the word of god reproduces itself amen just as the word of god gave us power to reproduce ourselves by having children, natural babies. So also, 
if we have received the spirit of God, it helps us to reproduce, to bring other people to righteousness. Like we saw about five or six people today come to fellowship with us for the first time. Somebody spoke to them. Amen. And they believe. And when they grow and they are matured and they understand, they too will speak to someone else. And that person will also believe. That way they have begotten children in Christ Jesus. This message does not come to make us barren. Spiritually barren. Just come together, play Brother Abraham's tape. The tape cannot answer questions. The tape cannot go and baptize you in the river. There are things that the tape can do. The tape can clarify doubts. Give us better understanding of the Bible. Amen? Give us better understanding of the mysteries of God. Better understanding of uh, the, the doctrines that we should believe and stand upon. But God has put in his church teachers, pastors, apostles, evangelists, prophets. This cannot be replaced by the tape. Amen. But some people have gotten to the point where they don't tolerate life ministry anymore. They just listen to Brother Abraham's tape and that's all. That is wrong understanding of this message. You know why? It is the beginning of walking in circle. Then the next thing you hear, quotations, contradicting quotations. Today, we, some have gotten to the place where the prophet is worshipped as God. The prophet's name is used in prayer. The prophet's name is used in baptism. They are going in circles. Circle. Circle. Because they don't hear from God. They just read a few books and come and say what the book said. Anybody can read books. But, but where is the fruit? Where is the fruit of that message? The world wants to see Christ made manifest. Not just religion. The world has seen enough religion. The world wants to see Christ. The prophet preached another message, I think. It says, we will see Jesus. We will see Jesus. The people came to the apostles. They have seen enough of Peter, enough of James, enough of John. They want to see Jesus. That's what the world wants to see. And where will they see Jesus? In you and me. Glory be to God. We must not join those today who have decided to be walking in circles. And rather than break away from walking in circles and walk straight, winning souls, pointing souls to Calvary, so that when the Lord comes, he will see the fruit of our labor. It's always a wonderful thing to see a new life. We have come back from this camp meeting. What then? How many people have you preached to since January till now? Or have you been walking in circles? Since you believed, it has been you and you alone. Or it has been you and yourself alone. Nobody has come to know the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ through you. Why? You have been walking in circles. We have come back from this camp meeting. We need to break away from this. And from now on, let your light so shine. Let your light so shine that people far away from Christ will behold the beauty of Christ in your life. Let this camp meeting become a stepping stone to a higher Christian life. Amen. People talk about deeper Christian life. I talk about higher Christian life. Amen. Let it be a stepping stone for the fire of the gospel of Christ to begin to burn in your life. Let it not be you 
and yourself alone anymore. Make your homes a house fellowship center. Open your homes for prayer. Let your neighbors join. Let your friends join. Make your homes a revival center where people can come and they behold the beauty of Christ. Challenge yourself and say before this year runs out, I am going to have a child in Christ. Preach to somebody. Pray with somebody. Let somebody say on that day when we get to heaven that it was because of you that he made the rapture. Break away from selfish Christianity. Just living in the premises and hiding your testimony. And people don't know that you are different from the Pentecostals or denominations that they know. Break away from that circle. Reach, reach your neighbor from today. God, the angels of heaven will rejoice when they see one sinner come back home. Look at the way we rejoice when we saw three, four, five, six people come for the first time to worship God with us today. Didn't that make you happy? I know we come from the camp and we are tired. But at least the mouth can still talk. Did that make you happy? Yes, Better. Let the devil hear it. Yes, Did that make you happy? Yes, Next Sunday. Are you going to break away from your circle of selfish worship? And reach somebody. These ones that came today, somebody reached them. Somebody invited them. What about you? If each and every one of us will invite one person, make sure that one person is saved. Saved by the grace of God. You are building your riches in heaven. Because nothing can be more pleasing to God than one soul being saved. All right. As we love our prophet and respect him and enjoy this message, let us remember what John the Baptist said. He that come from above is above all. Above all. Above every prophet. In some generations, they did not recognize that. And the prophet told us that in every age, the fivefold ministry goes astray. In every age, the fivefold ministry does what? They go astray. And the church follows them. And when they die, God will send another messenger to come with another light. But fearfully and unfortunately for us, this is the last. If we go astray in this age, how can we escape? Shah kept his eyes on Elijah. His eyes was on Elijah as long as Elijah was visible. He kept looking at Elijah. Looking at Elijah. Until Elijah was taken away from him. When Elijah was taken away from Elisha, Elisha did not stand there and be gazing into nothing. Because Elisha was no more there. I mean, Elijah was no more there. But Elijah gave Elisha something. Amen? Elijah's mantle, which carried Elijah's power, and anointing fell from Elijah. Elisha picked it up and tore his own mantle and put on Elijah's mantle. That is a demonstration that the God of Elijah is now with Elisha. Blessed be the name of our God. Brother Samuel Johnson here, he saw Brother Branham face to face. All of us here did not see him. Am I correct? Yes, sir. But the Bible says 
Blessed also are they who did not see. Amen. We did not see, but we do believe. But there's a mantle that Elijah of this day left behind. What is the mantle? The message. Go back to the Bible. And he saw in this day that some of the fivefold ministers were out of the line. He saw it in his vision. And he began to scream, Get back online! Get back online! What is the line? The word of God. Yeah. Glory be to God. What is the meaning of these ministers going out of line? They were misinterpreting the messages of the prophet. Men were beginning to put their own understanding, their own wisdom. So he screamed and said, get back, get back, see what the Bible said about it. See what the Bible said about it. If all of us will go back to the Bible and see what the Bible said about it, we will all believe the same thing, we will all receive the same thing, we will all preach the same thing. The Lord Jesus told the Pharisees, search the scripture. That is where you believe that you will have eternal life. And the scripture speaketh of me. Not of any other prophet. The scripture will speak about the Lord. It's the same thing today. Get back online. Get back to the word of God. It will always point to Jesus Christ. Blessed be his holy name. John did not allow himself to be exalted more than what he was. So when somebody told him, the man that was with you on the other side of Jordan, the man you baptized, he's pulling crowd more than you. People are leaving you and going to him on the other side. He's also baptizing them there. John say, that is my happiness. Anyone that has the bride, he is the bridegroom. But Abraham is not our bridegroom. Amen. Amen. John the Baptist is not our bridegroom. Paul is not our bridegroom. Peter is not our bridegroom. All these great men, messengers that God used in different ages, they are not the bridegroom. Abraham's servant was not the bridegroom to Rebecca. Amen. So, the bridegroom of this bride is the Lord Jesus Christ. The one that is with the bride. He is the bridegroom. And we must get back to the scriptures. Whenever we don't understand any part of the message, see what the Bible says about it. And if you don't understand any part of the Bible, see what the prophet said about it. That way, the, the messages are there to complement our understanding. And the Bible is there to remove every doubt that we have about any part of the message. Glory be to our God. As long as we depend not on our own wisdom, not on our own understanding, we will always be online. Glory be to our God. In the days of Elijah, Elijah, he had Elisha, a faithful follower. There were other sons of the prophets who were in the school of prophets. But Elisha was different. Elisha was chosen. He didn't just enroll in a uh, prophet's Bible school or school of prophets. God told Elijah to threw his mountain on Elisha, and Elisha followed him. Amen? Elisha was different from all the other sons of prophets. Elisha was faithful to the end, and he received the true 
an uncorruptible revelation. Amen. Amen. While others were busy worshipping God with their own wisdom, looking for where Elisha fell at the back of the mountain, Elijah, I mean, uh, Elijah was there receiving the mantle from Elijah. In the days of John the Baptist, the Bible says the whole of Jerusalem and Judea went out to Jordan to be baptized by John. Is that correct? Good. When Jesus came, how many of these people did John hand over to Jesus? Only two. Only two. But the Bible says the whole of Jordan, the whole of Jerusalem went to the river Jordan to be baptized. In fact, the Pharisees came and asked John to baptize them. And John said he saw them like vipers. But he said, I will baptize you. You can't stop anybody from being baptized. Anybody who says baptize me, you baptize him. Amen. But John said, bring forth the fruit of repentance. Repentance has fruit. It has evidence to prove that you really have repented of your sins and have decided to follow Jesus. So, in the days of Elijah, he had Elisha, a true follower. In the days of John, he had two disciples. Out of the thousands that came, these two followed Jesus. Today, in the days of the prophet of this day, many all over the world claim to follow this message. But the rapture will vindicate they that are true believers. The rapture. That's the vindication. Amen. Will you be one of them? By the grace of God. Not by power. Not by might. But by the spirit of the Lord. That is our aim. And to achieve this, we must not continue to walk in circles. We must break away from the circle. What is the circle? God sends a prophet. He delivers his message. People claim to believe. Along the way, they corrupt themselves. And start making captains over themselves. And no more follow the pure word. The prophet says, a messenger receives from God, delivers his message to the people. And those that carry the message will not be careful to keep the message pure. They add a little here, they take away a little there, and pretty soon the message is defiled. It loses its purity. We must be careful not to add or to take away. We must worship God in simplicity, in spirit and in truth. Because God hides himself in simplicity and reveals himself in simplicity. Can we say amen to that? Amen. Blessed be his holy name. I want to be one of the faithfuls. When Jesus comes, the prophet will not be ashamed to, in, to hand me over. And I will not be ashamed to hand you over yeah. to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. All right. Let's read one scripture here. The book of Judges. The book of Judges. You got Judges after Joshua. Deuteronomy. After Deuteronomy, you get Joshua. After Joshua, you find Judges. Chapters 2. Chapters 2, I'm reading from verse 16. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up Judges, who delivered them out of the hand of those who spoiled them. And yet, they will not hearken unto their judges but they played the harlot with other gods and turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in 
obeying the commandments of the Lord, but they did not so. And when the Lord raised them up judges, then the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For it repented the Lord because of their gnashing by reason of them who oppressed them and vexed them. And it came to pass when the judge was dead that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers in following other gods to serve them and to bow down unto them they cease not from their own doings nor from their stubborn way and the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel and he said because the, these people had transgressed my covenant when when which I commanded their fathers and have not hearkened unto my voice I also will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations which Joshua left when he died that through them I may test or try Israel whether they will keep the way of the Lord to walk therein as, as the, their fathers did keep it or not therefore the Lord left those nations without driving them out hastily neither delivered he them into the hand of Joshua can we say amen, amen. can my daughter say amen? amen all right can my son say amen, amen. can we all say amen? amen breaking the circle let's break this circle this is the testimony of God against Israel and if you bring it to the New Testament the seven church ages the same thing the same thing the people sin against God then their enemies carry them away God in his mercy because of their gnashing of their teeth because of their sorrow because of their misery God in his gracious mercy will raise up a judge and when God raises a judge God is with the judge amen he goes and delivers them from their enemies and brings them back as long as the judge is alive they worship God why their eyes are on the judge they are afraid of the judge they are not afraid of the God who delivered them as soon as the judge dies and there is no judge around they corrupt themselves again they bring back all the idols that they threw away because the judge told them to throw it away it's like the experience of television television like i said at the camp some people believe if they throw away television then they are holy it is the holy ghost that makes you holy some people think you have a television you will not make the rapture what you see in the television you see it on the road go to the bus stop you see it go to the university you see it naked men naked women it's all over the place you don't need a television to see it you may not have a television but you have monitors with dirty pictures with dirty films you still look at them it is a question of a converted heart if the heart is not converted whether you have television or not you are still filthy 
you are still dirty. Some people have television and they hide it. They hide it. And when you say, well, television is not good, they say, amen. But they hide it. They have it in their house, but they hide it. It is better that you have it on the table and everybody know you have it. Or oh, you are a hypocrite. If you throw it away because somebody said, ah, the prophet said you should not have it. The prophet said so, but he was referring to what you are doing with it. The dirty pictures. The dirty pictures. When the Ten Commandments first came out, there were no televisions. It was a big film. Many people want to watch it. The prophet watched it and he said it's a good film to see. There are films that glorify God. There are films that glorify the devil. You may not watch it on TV. You may go to a cinema house to watch it. It's a question of the condition of your heart. See? Don't watch dirty films. They defile you. And if you don't have the ability to overcome them, they will overcome you. Because there's a spirit in every film. Either the spirit of God or the devil. Don't listen to dirty music. Dirty music. There is a spirit controlling dirty music. There's a music that glorifies God. There's a music that insults God and glorifies the devil. It's a question of your heart. When the people are carried away into idolatry, worshipping the devil, God will raise a judge and this judge will go under the anointing of the Holy Ghost and deliver God's people from that idolatry and bring them back. And they start worshipping God. Not because they are converted. But because God sent somebody to deliver them. God sent somebody to deliver them. The moment they don't see that person anymore, they go back again. The same circle. The same walking in circles. Worshipping God in circles. God delivers you this month. Next month, you are back to your vomit. Then God sends another message and you repent and come back. Next month, you go back. You are like these people we are talking about here. Look at how many judges that God sent to deliver the people. Why did he send judges upon judges upon judges? Because each time a judge dies, they go back. Why did they go back? They are not converted. They are worshipping God out of fear. You don't worship God out of fear. You worship God out of love. Love. God loved you so much that he came down, left his glory in heaven. He was beaten because of me. He was slapped. He was spit upon. They put a crown of thorn on his head. He bled and died for me. That challenged me to a competition of love. How much do I love God? The Bible says, not that we loved him first. He first loved us. And when somebody loves you, you can't help it. You have to love them in return. If somebody loves you and you know, you will be wicked. You will be wicked not to return that love. Today, we don't worship God because God sent Brother Branham. Brother Branham is gone. So, what do we do? Go back to Roman Catholic? Go back to Anglican? Go back to Baptist? No, we will not go back because we are converted. We have received a change of heart. We have received a change of spirit. We have received an understanding, a revelation of who God is towards us and who we are towards him. We don't need another judge. This is the last church age. The last messenger has come and gone. God is not sending another judge, another prophet. So we can't afford to go back to the same circle of backsliding when there is no prophet we backslide we have seven church ages seven messengers why did God send messengers because his people always backslided when the messenger dies they backslide when the messenger dies they backslide God will send another one in this day 
the last one, the last, has come and gone. He has delivered us from religious idolatry. The worship of three gods. What is religious idolatry? Worshipping more than one god. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is how many? We have received the revelation. We cannot go back now. Can we? The last messenger has come. We cannot afford to be deceived. We cannot allow ourselves to get out of line because of human wisdom and human interpretation. Some people believe the prophet is coming back, so they're waiting for him. They bought an aircraft and parked it at the airport. I believe it's in Arizona. Just like the Muslims believe their prophet is coming back. They, they buy a horse and tie by his graveyard. When the horse dies, they buy another one and tie there. Now some people buy an aircraft and put there, believing the prophet will come back and use it. They are out of the line. Amen? All that said, Brother Branham preached marriage and divorce. In that marriage, he gave them permission to be polygamous. So they start marrying as many as they can. They are out of the way. Others believe Brother Branham is God. Others believe Brother Joseph Branham is God. Just believe that kind of nonsense. See? It is the same sequence. Each time the messenger dies, the people go astray. God in his mercy see their anguish sends another deliverer. But in our age, it is not so. We are in the last church age. Anybody goes astray now will go right into perdition. Destruction. Because God will not send another messenger. There is no promise that the eighth messenger, ninth messenger, or tenth messenger is coming. Therefore, we must be careful not to allow ourselves to be deceived so that we don't go back in the circle of believing, backsliding, believing, backsliding, believe, backslide. Because God will not send another prophet. May the Lord help us. Glory be to his holy name. Israel types the church. Do you believe that? Israel types the church. And if Israel will backslide every opportunity they have when their prophet dies and God in his mercy will send another one, we today do not have that privilege of backsliding so that God can send another deliverer. We don't have that privilege. Therefore, we must earnestly contend for that revelation that we have received and hold it tight until the Lord returns. Glory be to our God. There are some churches in our country here who claim to believe this message. But you see worldliness coming in. Necklaces. Women wearing necklaces of all types, earrings of all types, bangles of all types, Jerry curling their heads, anyhow. The skirts are becoming more worldly. The blouses are becoming more worldly. And the pastor has nothing to say. Why? They are backsliding. The same circle. The, the, the deliverer is dead. The judge is dead. The messenger is dead. So, the spiritual Israel, they are going around the circle again. Opening the door. Allowing the world to come in. Allowing the world to come in. Why? The judge is dead. The judge that upholds the standard, the word of God, is dead. So any man can do what they like. Any man can do what he likes. Any woman can do what she likes. But let it be known to all of us. We do not have that privilege of backsliding and God sending another prophet. We don't have it. This is the last. This is the last age. This is the last prophet. This is the last message. So we must be very careful 
we have just come back from a wonderful, blessed time with God. Don't let that fire quench. Let the revival continue to burn. Take your sides with Jesus. Take your sides with Jesus. There's a message on that. Amen? Taking sides with, with Jesus. Taking sides with Jesus. Take your sides with him today. When we get over there, he will take sides with us. What is the story of... Uh, what is that great evangelist? Daniel Kure. Thank you for reminding me. The great evangelist that the prophet told us the story. Who stood for Christ and preached the gospel all over the world. And one day he had a dream that he died and was taken up there to the judgment seat of Christ. And when the judgment was set, the throne of God was set. And God sat on the throne and he was brought to judgment. And the voice asked him, Daniel Corey, while you were on earth, were you always honest? He wanted to say yes. Then he remembered one or two occasions when he was not honest. And he said, no, Lord. Did you always tell the truth? He wanted to say yes. Then he remembered one or two times he did not tell the truth. He said, no, Lord. Were you righteous? He wanted to say yes. Then he remembered one or two times he was not quite righteous. He said, no, Lord. All his answer was no. No, no, no. If it's an examination, did he pass? Good. He knows that he has failed the standard. All of us here. If you were Daniel Corey and you stood before God and these questions were asked. When you were on earth, now you're a dead man. But when you were on earth, you had the opportunity. Were you always righteous? What will you say? Were you always telling the truth to your wife, to your, to your husband? Let's start from the house. Did you always tell your husband the truth? Did you always tell your wife the truth? Were you always honest? What will your answer be? What will my answer be? The Bible says we are dealing with God with whom nothing is hid. He knows everything. He knows everything. Brother Hildebrand told me one day, he says, my friend, on the judgment day, some people will come to the judgment seat and just call one angel and say, where is the way to hell? And the angel will say, this way. They say they already know. They don't want to waste God's time. They know hell is their place. They just say, which way leads to hell? They say, this side, keep going. Is that what you want? When the question comes, it will be the same question for everybody. The same. It will be the same question. But, because Daniel Corey stood for Jesus Christ when he was alive here on earth, he stood for Christ and did not allow anything to influence him. While he was standing there, hopeless, condemned by himself, just waiting for the command to be given for him to be cast into the lake of fire. Because there is no explanation with God. No explanation. It was because, it was because he did not save Adam. He did not save Saul. It will not save you or me. You don't have to explain. You explain things to people who do not understand the situation. God knows everything from beginning to end. So no need to explain. He knows it all. Did you always tell the truth? Daniel Corey said no. What about you? The enjoyment of this life, the pleasure of the flesh, will take some people to hell. And they will burn and burn and all the desire of the flesh will be burnt out. There is nothing in a woman 
that should make a man go to hell. Nothing. There's nothing in a man that should make a woman go to hell. If you will go to hell because of a woman, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. If you will go to hell because of a man, I'm sorry. There will be no judge coming to deliver again. There is no other prophet coming after this. So we must hold what we have to the end. While Daniel Korah was waiting to be cast into the lake of fire, the prophet said a hand came from behind and touched him on the shoulder. And a voice, sweeter than the voice of a mother, spoke out and said, Father, while he was on earth, he stood for me. Now he is here. I want to stand for him. Amen. Let all his sins and all his iniquities be put in my account. There is power in the blood of Jesus Christ to save and to redeem. Have you stood for Jesus Christ here on earth? Have you? Have you? Some of you, some of you here, sacrifice some chalets at the campground. I am looking forward to more, more chalets. More. You can do that for the glory of God. You can. Some people sacrifice the cows that we ate at the camp. I don't know who they are. Some people sponsored the camp meeting. Some people are helping with some equipment for the school to raise our children the way they should grow. What part are you playing? Have you stood for Christ? Are you part of the 11th hour that go out to evangelize and bring souls to Christ? Are you a part of the prayer group what is your position in Christ? Look at our body. The, fi the fingers have work to do. The toes, the legs, the hands, the eye, the ear. Every part of the body, even the intestines, have contribution to make for the body to work together for good. So are we in Christ. Everybody has a place and a position. If you don't know your place and your position, Ask and God will show it to you. Daniel Corey stood for God while he was here. And when he got over there, even though there were some inadequacies in his life, as a man, the Bible says, No man that doeth righteousness and sinneth not. But if you die in your sin, then there is no remission for you. When a tree falls, so it remains. If a tree is straight and it falls, it remains straight. If it is crooked, when it falls, it remains crooked. If your life is crooked and God calls you home, you remain crooked. If your life is straightened out, then God will stand for you over there. Let us break away from the circle. And go straight to the promised land. And know that while we are yet here, gladly, courageously, boldly, we stand for Christ. Not being ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God unto salvation to him that believeth. For the rest of the year, don't be barren. Let the fire of the revival that God has kindled in you born until you bring children in Christ Jesus. That's, that's the only way to go forward. That's the only way to go forward. Let's not continue to worship God in the same circle. The same circle. A whole month will pass and you don't minister to anybody. Two months, three months, you did not speak the word of God to anybody. You are going in circles. Today, God wants us to break away 
from that circle. Maybe your own circle is worshiping God this month. Next month, you, have, you backslide. Another month, you come. Next one, you backslide. Break away from that circle. And begin to worship God right through. When things are good, when things are bad, the Lord is good all the time. All the time. Whether things are good, whether things are hard, whether things are difficult, whether things are sweet, the Lord is good all the time. If you want to see God in the good times, you will see Him. You want to see God when things are difficult, you will see Him. Don't let tears blind your eyes or sorrow blind your eyes. God is still there with you. Amen. Glory be to his holy name. Amen. Let's pray together. <clears throat> Having returned from this camp meeting, what then? Are we going to just forget all that we have promised God and all that God has promised us? If God has spoken to you today, it's your turn now to reciprocate. God would like to hear from you. What have you to say? What have you to tell him? We have come from the camp meeting. We had a wonderful time. We heard the word of God. Are you going to go back in circles and circles, the same old pattern of worship? Hot today, cold tomorrow. Tell the truth today. Tell a bunch of lies tomorrow. You're a saint today. You're a sinner tomorrow. That circle, vicious circles. There will be no more judges sent. There will be no more prophets sent. This is the last age. This is the last prophet. This is the last messenger. Daniel Corey is an example of those that we dedicate to sacrifice to live for Christ knowing that one day they will cross over to the other side of life we all slept last night and we are awake this morning there will be another night that you will sleep and may not wake up do you remember that? mercy is calling you now won't you give heed? What will you give in exchange for your soul? If today God calls it away, what are you going to give in exchange for your soul? Daniel Corey thought that he was finished. Any moment from now, he will be thrown into the lake of fire. But some of us are not thinking that we are finished. Some of us are thinking that we are ready, ready for the judgment day, ready for the rapture, careless about making things right. It is those that are proud in their own eyes that God has a, a terrible surprise for them. Break, break away from that circle. Become a soul winner. Become a soul winner. Be productive. Let the people see the fruit of repentance. Let him that steal, steal no more. Let him that fight, fight no more. Let him that lie, lie no more. Let him that sin, sin no more. 